What is up heroes, this is Midnight Zero, and welcome back to Let's Play Corpse Party. In the last episode, we started off the game, uh, we got introduced to these wonderful characters, these students of Kizaragi High, and Ayumi and all of her occult shenanigans. And we did the Sachiko after charm that was supposed to make us friends forever, together forever. But um, but alas, we woke up alone with the sprained ankle, potentially. Oops voice acting though um and now we're trying to figure out where we are where everyone is and what we can do uh because this doesn't this doesn't seem as positive and cheery as the last time we were hanging out with everyone but i do want to say thanks um i'm glad to see that there is some corpse party hype and i am looking forward to getting through the rest of this game if there is stuff from like i don't know let's say the steam version that's exclusive or the 3ds version that's exclusive i'll be sure to note it and include it as is fitting and um, I would also like to note that the quality might not be super up to date, uh, but I'm am, I am improving it. I'm stuck with my own computer, and I'll be getting a new computer soon. So you know, within the next couple episodes, you should see a pretty big jump in quality. But it's also keep in mind it was a PSP game, so the resolution is really low relative to that of probably the screen you're watching it on. So keep that in mind. Anyways, it's dark, but I think I can feel my way through the hall to get around all these holes in the floor. Okay, then let's head on up here. What? Are we gonna... What's going on up here? <gasps> Yo! That's Seiko! Seiko! Is that Seiko? Seiko! 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 Something I forgot to touch on um, in the last episode was that the voice acting in this game is great, which is why I'm gonna give it so much attention and give it as much respect as I can because it is just really well done. Yo, we gotta... We gotta rush over. This... This isn't good! Taihen! Um, let's see if we can head on over there and, what's it called? Head out into the dark hallway. Ooh. The spookiness is real. Yikes, watch where you're walking. Oof, that really hurt. My ankle's in pretty bad shape. Ooh, what's this over here? Sorry, Seiko, but you know, I like to read my newspapers now. Heavenly Post, third student reported missing. One by one, the young students of Heavenly Host, Nani, Nani, I, I said Nani, Nani. Sorry, whenever I think in Japanese, and like there's like a blank or something like that, instead of like blah, 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 or like et cetera, et cetera, it's like Nani, Nani. Uh, school seemed to be disappearing, as now a third student has joined the ranks of the missing. Classmates testify that fifth grader something was on her way home from school, but got separated from her friends in the hall and hasn't been seen since. Police are investigating the possibility of a serial kidnapping and have assigned countless investigators to the case in hopes of a speedy resolution. However, ten days have already passed since the first disappearance, giving parents and classmates ample cause for concern. Doesn't sound so good. It's like a pretty bad, sticky situation. But now let's see. Seiko! Seiko, you don't you don't look so hot. Seiko! 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 Oh, Seiko Nami. You're concerning Nami. You gotta wake up, Seiko. <laughs> Thank goodness. She's still breathing. Seiko, That's definitely a good sign. Seiko, Seiko, come on! Seiko, wake up! <laughs> She's coming too. Yes! <laughs> oh my god, it's such like a cute, like, just like woke up, like, sort of voice. Huh? Naomi? Dotano? <laughs> What's up? <laughs> <laughs> Don't you what's up me? I thought you were dead. This is such like a mom like kid relationship right now. Hmm. Uh where Where are we? What's going on? That's what I'd like to know. <laughs> What's the struggle for? Hmm, it ain't budging. These windows are sealed up tight. And it's pitch black out there. I can't make heads or tails of what I'm seeing. What the heck is going on? Hmm, poor Nami. Well, this is clearly a school building. I guess any information, any sort of lead is helpful in this sort of a situation. 
れにしてはなんか妙に机が小さい気がするんだよね。Don't the desk seem unusually small to you though? 小学校みたい。What was that? What was that sound effect for? Like in elementary school? Bam! 小学校って In elementary school, and now as the music kicks in. It can't be, can it? Yep, it is what you think it is. The moment of truth. What is it? The printout on the wall. It says Heavenly Host Elementary. Notice to all faculty and students this is not the Kisaragi Academy you're. You know and love. This is the Heavenly Host Elementary from the 1970s that you were just talking about. Heavenly Host? Isn't that. The elementary school that preceded Kisaragi Academy? The one that was shut down and demolished? Are they actually in this school? Was it. Was it actually underneath the Kisaragi Academy? Like, even if this is Heavenly Host Elementary School, like, where is it? It's not like it just exists as, like, a long lasting, like, underground school underneath Kisaragi Academy, right? It got demolished. So, like, how is it existing? Yeah! No, no, no. Oh, God! What's, what's happening? Where the heck are we? And we're our friends, and Yui Sensei. <laughs> calm down, Seiko. Don't get so worked up. Gotta calm down. Gotta clear your mind. Hopefully, think through things pretty well. You got two heads. You can attack this problem in a much better way than someone alone could. Sorry. Seiko and I just stood there and I didn't have a voice. Seiko and I just stood there in silence, hand in hand. Which is like, not the end of the world. Also, just real quick shout out, the, my wallpaper in the background just turned to Love Live Sunshine, which is wonderful because <laughs> it happened as they said hand in hand in this game, and I couldn't help but think of <laughs> the song from Sunshine. <laughs> It was the first time in my life that I'd been shaking so hard I could hear my teeth chatter. I had become completely lightheaded and couldn't even think straight, much less wrap my brain around what's happening to us. And in these sorts of situations, maybe it's, maybe it's best to not do something immediately, not be able to do something. Maybe you're not able to do something because your body wants you to think about it. They want you to stop and think about it a little more critically. A little more carefully, not in a panic stricken state. I kept telling myself it's all a dream, some horrible nightmare, but no matter how hard I wished for it, I just couldn't wake up. And the silence was the worst part of it all. I couldn't take it anymore. I had to say something, anything. So, what do you say? Hey, I don't have the slightest idea what's going on. But how about we try finding a way out of here? Not a bad idea. A way out. We can't just stand here quaking in terror. We need to do something, you know? Besides, I don't want to be in this creepy place any longer,、um, any longer than I have to. And I don't blame you. Like, how often do people want to be in like, haunted houses? Like, it's fun for like, a small little ride or something like that, especially when you know there's an exit. But if you don't know there's an exit, I would panic too. <laughs> But the windows are all sealed shut. I mean, those aren't the only exits, Seiko. Like, maybe, maybe think to look for, like, a door or something. 
And I don't just mean they're stuck or locked. It's like there are decorations on the wall. I don't even think they can open. Yikes, so like they weren't even given the functionality of like opening. Is it even possible to leave this building? Only one way to find out, right? Do everything you can. <laughs> I'm not sure, but there might be an entrance way, or an emergency exit, or something. Some means of getting outside. You're right, and it's a lot better than just standing around. I feel like I'm gonna go all loony in here if I uh if we keep this up. Yeah, I mean at some point it's you know better just try and do something to as Shiloh Buff would say, just do it <laughs> Um rather than just wait around all day for someone else to try and hopefully do it. Alright then, first step is to leave this room. We've got to keep our spirits up. After all, it's probably not just the two of us in here. Whether that's a good thing, whether it's our friends that are also here, or whether it's maybe not just our friends that are also here. The others have to be around somewhere, right? Yeah, and if we can reunite with them, we'll find a way out of here <laughs> together. Oh man, I love this soundtrack. I love this song that kicks in. I, um, I'm actually really happy I got the soundtrack for this with the Back to School Edition um, that I got for Christmas. That's the spirit. Alright, so now, with our spirits raised, what are we going to do? I had no reason to believe any of what I just said. It, that does happen sometimes, where, you know, you're struggling with a problem yourself, and you kind of like tell someone uh, what they need to do when they're struggling for a struggle or pro struggle or like they're struggling uh, from a similar or with a similar problem and You're not just telling them how to help deal with it But you're also trying to reconvince and tell yourself how to deal with it, too. I got a lot of experience with that I was probably delirious to be honest But I knew that if I didn't act I'd start to go mad I'd start to scream I'd be inconsolable so in desperation, I put on the strongest front I could, I, I could manage. And here we are, um, alright, so the character introductions. Direct the eye toward any character and press the X button to learn more about him or her. When you're done, exit through the door on the southeast side of the room to resume play. Alright, so now we hear this weird little eyeball. I think it's funny or interesting that they chose eyeball of all things to have this little, little character. But now we'll go around, we'll chat with all the characters, find out a little bit more about them, starting with... We got Yui Sensei, a 23-year-old 11th grade English teacher at Kisaragi High. Just started the semester after passing her teaching exam and is eager to make an impression. That typical young teacher, my mom actually was a teacher uh, when she was really young. And it's funny because she absolutely loved it, but she also mentioned um, that it's very typical, like, oh, fresh out of college, like, you know what you're doing the best, but at the same time, you have all these ideas and you are you think you're doing a lot better than you maybe actually were if you had a lot more experience. But although not a perfect instructor by any means, her unjaded zeal and enthusiasm are infectious and her students seem generally responsive to her methods. Generally responsive. Have so much confidence in your teaching methods. Also serves as a teacher's assistant during homeroom for class 2-9, which is the class that um, a lot of these students are from, and really seems to have connected with the students there. Okay, so she's tight. And <laughs> yeah, no kidding, Ayumi, she's on like a high, sh high five, like pull pranks on the other students' relationship uh, basis, so. Now we got Yoshiki Kichinuma, a 17-year-old student in Kisaragi High Class 2-9, often regarded as sarcastic and cynical, but as far as he's concerned, he's just being honest. I feel that. Um, and that's something I've had to come to terms with personally, and obviously this isn't just me talking about my, myself and my life and relating it to all the characters as we go through them, of course. But, no, it is worth understanding that some people do think this way. Some people very much, probably a lot more people don't. Um, although generally not one to participate in events, his fondness for Satoshi and Ayumi means he'll make an exception now and again if either is involved. Aw, this guy's a friend. With a tense drama at home, Yoshiki currently works part-time after school to afford rent in a small um, apartment where he lives alone. Yikes, that is quite the troubled family life. To not only need to work, but then to do so to live apart from your family that you could be living with. Like, that just shows how far he's willing to go to get away from his family. Which says a lot about this family. 
Now we got Ayumi Shinozaki, the 17-year-old appointed representative of Kisaragi High Class 2-9. Often subjects her classmates to ghost stories. Uh, ghost stories. Oh my god, what an anime. And revels in hearing these hearing them scream. Um, it's generally believed that she carries candles and other horror goods with her at all times, just in case an opportunity presents itself to use them. Alright, in truth, however, Ayumi wears this reputation as a mask to hide her own fear of the unknown, which rivals even Satoshi's in its intensities. Or in intensity. That's like a, maybe like a coping mechanism to try and embrace your like fear as much as you can um, to kind of mask it or to get over it or to at least appear to other people like you don't have it. When faced with any truly scary situation, her knees give out and panic sets in. Only her personal pride can break her out of this fear-induced state. Yikes. Hopefully we don't... I, I wonder if we're going to see her in that panic-induced state. Alright, so now we got Mayu Suzumoto. This is the girl who's going to be transferring. A 16-year-old student in Kisaragi High Class 2-9. Somehow looks much tinier than, <clears throat> than she actually is. But possesses a big heart and a bright personality. Duh! And she's got the cute little ahoge. Um, the moe is real, right? Um, accepts anyone and everyone with open arms, never playing favorites, which has earned her nearly universal regard amongst her fellow students. Unfortunately, due to familial circumstances, this was Mayu's last day at Kisaragi High. She'll be moving shortly and transferring to a new school. Okay. Let's see, uh, let's see what we got here. We got Morishige. Sakutaro uh, Morishige, a 16-year-old student in Kisaragi High, class 2-9. He's been in theater club with Mayu since middle school and developed a real closeness with her. Duh, the childhood friends. He finds socializing with anyone else to be more trouble than it's worth. However, so he typically regards his other classmates with indifference. Only the people that intrigue you the most, only the people you can get use out of. That sort of personality, it seems. Takes great pride in his family heritage and reacts violently if anyone makes fun of his name. The only exception is the nickname Mayu has given him. Shige. So, <laughs> this reminds me of Togumi. Uh, Togumi from Danganronpa. But apparently, apparently he's got a special place for Mayu. And, okay, let's take a look at uh, who we got here. We got Yuka Mochida, Satoshi's 14-year-old sister. Though she's an 8th eighth grader at Kisaragi Academy Junior High School, she looks and acts much, much younger. In the Mochida household, Yuka's always been the princess, generally getting her way, and thus never really shedding her childlike behavior. Well, excuse me, princess, but <laughs> where you are now, it doesn't look like you're going to be able to get that kind of a service. <laughs> Uh, despite this, she yearns to grow up, often attempting to act older and braver than she is, which sometimes gets her in trouble. That said, it probably helps her explore and branch out and figure out new things on her own, develop a little bit of independency, which tends to be forgotten when you're treated like a princess. So now, Seiko Shinohara, a 16-year-old student at Kisaragi High Class 2-9, lives very close to Naomi and generally accompanies her to and from school each day. A free spirit, she often says or does things that take others by surprise, though she's also easily forgiven due to her good nature and amiability. Uh, her mother disappeared three years ago, leaving her with three younger siblings and a working father. As such, she basically serves as the as head of the household. Yikes, that's a lot of responsibility to throw on the shoulders of a teenager. Seiko seems to regard Naomi as a kindred spirit, and the two of them frequently have long conversations about their many dreams for the future. Duh, so we're talking about like deep friends here, it seems. Okay, so now we have Naomi Nakashima, uh, part two of the dynamic duo. Um, a 16-year-old student in Kisaragi High Class 2-9 and a classmate of Satoshi's since junior high. It's interesting that they mention that she's a friend of Satoshi's, whereas like Seiko, like part of her definition, like part of her personality is defined by her relationship with Naomi, but they start off by defining Naomi in relation to Satoshi. Frequently greet Satoshi with, oh, not you again. <laughs> Um, having lost her father a few years back, Naomi and her mother now depend on one another for moral support. Still, she remains optimistic and cheerful. A lot of, lot of familial trouble going on with these characters. Her home life has given her interest in nursing, which she's intent on pursuing. She spends her time studying, aiming for acceptance to medical school. Just a quick little... to nursing school. And then, of course, Satoshi Mochida, a 17-year-old student in Kisaragi High Academy Senior High Class 2-9. Fairly average, but popular. So there's gotta be something non average, right? Nobody gets. Well, I guess. Now that I think about it, nobody gets really popular by being just fairly average in every regard. But if you're so fairly average that you're popular, isn't that not average? Or are you like above average, average? I don't know, I'm just being silly. Um, known for being both kind and cowardly in equal measure. Uh, despite his timidness, he's very personable and open, which complements his general sensitivity toward others to make him a natural leader. So hopefully Satoshi uh, sucks it up a little bit, isn't just screaming throughout the whole game and actually leads people. 
The one person ever to challenge that leadership is Naomi, who is consequently the only person to whom Satoshi regularly defers judgment. Okay, so with that, it looks like we have all of our characters uh, pretty well known. Yeah, yeah, I think so. So, here we go. Got our little bios. Uh, let me know if you guys if you guys have played this game before. Let me know who you guys' favorite characters are. If you don't, if you don't know all the characters that well, I don't know. Take some guesses maybe based on these little descriptions. I think it'd be really fun. Just type it right now. Give you, I'll give you a few seconds. Don't worry. You can scroll down, you can type, start type, little little type, and then come back. And we're good to go. All right, let's end the character introductions and return to the game. Yes, yes, let's do this. Come on, Naomi, let's go. Okay. Right. I'll refrain from talking about my personal favorite character for a bit, but okay. So now we get the chance to explore. We get this nice music going on. Wait a sec. <laughs> do we, do we got another earthquake. <laughs> Another earthquake? No! <laughs> this is not good. You don't have Yui Sensei to look over you. Is it over? It's over 9,000! <laughs> On the Richter scale, that would be an incredible earthquake. I'm pretty sure that only goes up to like 11 or something, but phew. I've had enough. Let's just get out of this room. Yeah, let's just try and like progress at least a little bit. She's the one with the sprained ankle. What? What's wrong? Uh-oh, this hallway looks totally different than it did before. Maybe the earthquake made more of the floor collapse. Yikes, a lot of floor collapsing so far. It's caused a lot of problems for these students. Yeah, maybe. Also, sorry, I'll point out that this audio imbalance, rather, between the voice acting and um, the music is on the game's part, not mine. Uh, the gap is relatively narrow here. It seems crossable, but it's a little too wide to risk jumping. Uh, I mean, I guess she does have a sprained ankle as well, so we're going to have to find something to cross that little gap. What do we have here in this bucket? There's a yellow fluid congealing inside the breast of Yikes. <laughs> what the heck is this, pee? Ew, don't say that. <laughs> Getting all the various, <laughs> not not really the place to really care about something like that. And it looks like we got another one of those gaps over there. Okay, well, I do remember this little board here. Uh, hey, Naomi? Hmm? Oh, also, really quick to notice, uh, please, please do not say Naomi. Naomi is not the Japanese pronunciation of Naomi. It's like, as if, if you speak English, N-O-W-M-E, like, now, me, is like the way to say it. And so many people I've heard say Naomi, and it bugs me, so, little pet peeve of mine. Is something wrong with your leg? Oh, yeah, you didn't notice? Oh, yeah, I was so freaked out, I forgot all about it. I think I sprained my ankle when I fell. Well, that's not good. Will you be okay? <laughs> I can walk at least. I'm sure it'll heal on its own. Oh, yeah, but you shouldn't push yourself. Here, lean on my shoulder, okay? Oh, this cute little teamwork. Alright, thanks. Okay, so let's go and grab this uh, loose towel. There's a loose board lying on the ground here. Take it with you. Yes! Ooh, I love this little like art too. Like even even this like plank. Like it could be drawn so blandly as like a plank, a loose board. But look at this. It looks like it fits the like boards of the school and everything, and it adds to the environment. I, I gotta love stuff like that. Okay, so let's use this loose board. We can go north, south. Let's um let's head this way first. The gap is relatively narrow here. It seems yada yada yada. Hey, Naomi, what about that loose board we found? You think it would support our weight? Like a bridge? Hmm, I don't know, it seems... Kind of beat up, but I guess it is pretty solid. Ooh, do we want to try it? Do we want to lay down the board and try and get across? Or do we think it's too risky? Do we think the board is going to break under our weight? Well, I'm all-knowing, so we're going to try it. 
<laughs> um, the loose board has been set in place. So we don't break. And we good. All right, so let's head on down. What do we got to go in here? Oh, we got a nice candle. This looks like, um, what's it called? Ayumi's candles. Hmm, this candle. I could swear I've seen it before. Oh, and there we are. This is the nice little save screen, so we'll we'll save our data real quick. And uh, there we go. We will head on down to the next floor in the next episode. I hope you guys are really enjoying this playthrough. I hope you guys like now that the story is kind of like escalated. Now you have like a little bit of a, a little bit of a taste of I don't know the five, like four course or five course meal that is Corpse Party. <laughs> this is a really bad analogy. This is, sorry, forgive me for that, but. Oh my goodness, it's so good. Please stick around, at least for this first chapter. Um, the first chapter is really representative of what this game can really offer, and it's relatively short. And look forward to higher quality in the future episodes. And yeah, again, let me know what your favorite characters are. And I look forward to seeing you guys in the next episode. But until then, this has been Midnight Zero, and this mission is complete.